Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will go through the most important security rules for Firestore to make sure only the persons who are allowed to read and write to your database can actually do that. I will explain the most important configuration options here. So if you are only interested in a few of those, then you can find jump points in this video's description. As you can see, I already set up a very basic database here with a countries collection that contains two countries, Germany and India, that both contain a field population, as you can see. And we also have a notes collection that contains a public note and a secret note with which I will show you how we can only allow read and write operations to public notes if the type is public and not secret, like in this case. But feel free to use your very own database. I will just use this one to have an example for you. So to actually see and change your database rules, make sure to be in your Firebase console and then in Firestore, you can see the tab rules. We want to click on that. And then this little text will probably open for you if you launch your database in test mode. And inside of this text box here, we will specify our rules for our database. As you can see, that starts with a rules version that is set to two. That is the currently the most up-to-date rules version and as long as that is the case, you should always leave this number as it is. Then that is followed by a service part here that just specifies that these rules apply to Cloud Firestore. And then we have those two match statements followed by a path. So the outer match statement here refers to our current database and its documents. And inside of this outer match block here, we can specify several match blocks. In this case, it is only one match block here that contains all of our documents contained in our database. So as you can see at these two asterisk symbols here, those rules that we put into this match block here will apply to all documents in our database. And in here, you can see we allow reading and writing if our request time is less than this timestamp. That date here will be one month after the date you created your database. So by default, Firebase will set up rules that allow read and write operations to anyone for 30 days. And after that, nobody will be allowed to do that anymore. And if we now want to separate reading and writing access, then we can simply put this into a different line. Also write allow before that. And after allow read, we simply write if true, for example, that would mean that we that everybody is allowed to read from our database at all times. So no matter what that timestamp here is, but writing only applies to this timestamp. And instead of read and write, we can also specify those actions more detailed with create, for example, that only allows creating new documents if this condition here is true. For writing, we could also use delete. So we could only delete documents and fields inside of documents. If that is true, we can use update to only update existing document values if this is true. And for reading, I will actually revert that to write. And for reading, we have the possibility to allow list that will check if this condition is true. And if it is, then we are allowed to get documents from collections and from queries. So basically several documents. And if we set this to get instead, then we are only allowed to read from single documents, but not from queries or collections. But I will also revert that to read because what I want to show you now is what you need quite often is I want to check if the user who actually wants to read the data is authenticated or not. And we only want to allow him to read the data if he is authenticated. And that is very easy to do. Instead of this true, we simply want to check if our request dot auth is not equal to null. That means the user is currently authenticated. And to actually test that this Firebase console has a very cool rules playground in the bottom left corner here, we can open that up. And you can see we, we have a simulation type here that is currently set to get so we want to get data from our database, we want to simulate that. And here we can enter a location so a particular document on which we want to simulate that. And the only thing we need to do here is to enter a path to that document. We don't need to change the path of this line here. We only need to change the bottom field. And you can see it already suggests me countries slash Germany. I will also choose that. And we have a little toggle here 
to decide if this is an authenticated user or not, I will start to set this to not authenticated, make sure to publish our rules. So click on publish here. Then it is published. And if I now click on run, then it will simulate that get request to our database to that Germany document in my database. Let's see what happens. And you can see the simulated read was denied because we were not authenticated and we only allow read operations if our request.auth object is not equal to null. But if we are not authenticated, then it will be null. So let's see what happens if I switch that toggle and click run again. Then you can see the simulated read was allowed because now we are authenticated. If we want to declare rules separately for different collections, then we can do that with several match statements. As you can see, we have that inner match statement that currently applies to all documents in our database. But if we simply remove that document is equal to double asterisk and write countries instead, followed by those curly brackets and past country here, then those rules will only apply to documents inside of this country's collection. And if we don't declare a match statement for a particular collection, then read and write operations will be forbidden by default. So currently we don't have that match statement for our notes collection. So we shouldn't be allowed to read and write from our notes. So let's click on publish and test if that is working. We want to get the country's Germany again. That should work now because we allow reading if we are authenticated and we read a document inside of this country's collection. So let's click run. And you can see simulated read was allowed. But once I change this path now to our notes slash public node, because that shouldn't be allowed now, that is not contained inside of our match statement. If I now click run, then you can see simulated read was denied. So if we would add another match block here that applies to our notes, and here we simply write allow read if true. So we always allow reading to uh, reading from our notes collection. Click on publish and click on run again. Then you can see now the simulated read is allowed because we declared that match block here. But let's next see what we can do if we only want to allow reading from a document if a particular field inside of that document is equal to a specific value. So as you can see inside of my database, I have that notes collection and both the public node and the secret node have that type property here. The public node has the type public and the secret node has the type secret. And I only want to allow reading to nodes that are not secret, so that are public. How can we do that? Let's jump back to our rules tab here, go into that match block to our nodes. And instead of allowing all read operations here, we want to check if our resource dot data dot type is equal to public. So by writing resource dot data, we can refer to the current document. So to the current node. And after that, we can refer to the properties of that node. And if that type property of our node is equal to public, then we want to allow reading from that node. So let's see if that is working. Click on publish open our rules playground and refer to our notes slash public node. That should work now. We want to get something from that public node. And because it is public, reading should be allowed. Let's click run. And you can see simulated read was allowed. But once I change this to secret node and click run again, then the simulated read was denied because our node is secret. And this can, for example, also be used for user roles in your app. So for example, if you have normal users and admins and you want to distinguish between them in your security rules, then you simply put a field inside of your user document that says if that user is an admin or not. And then you check if resource.data.isAdmin is equal to true or not. And according to that, you allow reading or writing from that field or from that document. And what we have done here with resource data can also be applied to write operations. So we can check if the change that should be written to the document is equal to a particular value. So let's check in the allow write condition here if our request.resource.data.type is equal to secret. 
So what that would mean is if we want to make a write change to our node and that write change is secret, so we want to make that node secret, then it is allowed. But once this node is secret and we want to make it public, that is not allowed. And to test that, we, we have to change the simulation type from get to update because we want to update the type value of our node. And we let's say we want to change the type value of our secret node from secret to public. We want to try that. That won't work because of our rule. Then we can click on build document. And here we can describe the fields we want to change. In this example, that is type. And we want to change it to public. Click on done. And then simply click on run, but actually publish your rules before, of course. When that is done, click on run. And as you can see, that was denied. But if we want to make our public node secret, so we need to change the, the type value again, click on build document, type secret. That should work now because we have that rule and we check if our request data is equal to secret. So let's click on run. And you can see that simulated write was now allowed. And by the way, those rules only apply to documents inside of this notes collection, but not to documents of sub collections of that notes collection. If you want to apply those also to sub collections, then instead of that node, you simply write document is equal to that double asterisk again. So that will go into the notes collection and all documents that somehow are contained inside of that notes collection will have these rules here. But let's say we want to allow read operations from our node, but by checking if a value of another document is equal to a particular value. So let's say we want to allow reading from our node only if the population of our country, Germany, is bigger than, let's say, 80 million. Because that won't work like this, because with resource.data, we refer to the current document, and that is our node, and it doesn't refer to another document like Germany. And if we want to accomplish that, then we have to remove that and use the function get. And here we have to provide a path to the document we want to check something from. And that will be slash databases slash. And then we have to use that dollar sign as a placeholder for our database. And make sure to use normal parentheses here, not curly brackets as they did it be up here. I don't know why they do it like this, but it seems like you have to do it and refer to the documents after that, refer to our countries, then to Germany. And after that parentheses, we can now refer to the data of Germany, to the data dot population and check if that is bigger than 80 million. And in my database, the population of Germany is actually bigger than 80 million. So that reading should work. Let's try that out choose get as a simulation type here. We want to get something from our public node. Click on run. And you can see the simulated read was allowed. But if I change this to 82 million, that is not true anymore. And click on run again. Then you can see the simulated read was denied. And if you simply want to check if a particular document exists, then you can replace that get function here with exists. And of course, remove that conditional check here. So we simply want to use that exists function that returns true if that document at that path exists and false if it does not exist. So let's check that we want to get something and the country Germany actually exists in my country's collection. Click on run and you can see the read was allowed. If we change this to USA, for example, which does not exist in my database, click on run, then you can see it was denied. So those were the most important rule options that you should know to secure your database. But as a last important note, rules don't work as filters. So that means if you want to access a whole collection and you are only allowed to read some of the documents and not all of them, then you will get a permission denied error. So it won't work the way that you only get the documents you are allowed to read from. Instead, you will get none of them. So always make sure if you have a query that you are actually allowed to read all of those documents. So I hope this video helped you to understand Firestore security rules. 
because those rules are really essential, especially if you plan to move your app into production mode, then you should really take your time to overthink your rules and create them because otherwise everybody will be allowed to read and write from your database and you definitely don't want that. So make sure to tell me below if this helped you and also if you have any questions, just post them below. I will take my time to answer them. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.